Now let's look at kind of the inner workings of the op amp. So if we opened up the op amp, we have these two inputs that come in over here. So one of them's the inverting and the other one is the non-inverting. And then we consider there to be a resistor that goes in between these two inputs. Um, so if I call this input A, then the voltage here at this input is VA. And if this is input B, this is VB. And this might, might be labeled like V1, V2, or VN1, VN2, or something like that. So um, the resistor between those, I'm going to call that Rn. And then um, the op amp actually behaves like a, um, a dependent voltage source. And what it's dependent on is the voltage difference between these two input voltages. So there's an output resistor here, R out, and then this is our output that comes out there. And the output that's going to come out is going to be a voltage and the voltage is going to be a function of the gain times VD, where VD is the voltage difference between these two inputs. So this is VB minus VA. And um, this Rn is going to be a really big resistor, and this R out is going to be a relatively small resistor. And then our gain is also really huge. This is going to be something like 10 to the 5 to 10 to the 8 or something like that. So if you have um, a problem that specifies you're dealing with a non-ideal op amp, you can actually replace the op amp with this circuitry here, where you replace the inputs with two lines coming in with the resistor between them, and then a dependent voltage source with a value of um, the gain times VD, where VD is the difference between the inputs connected to an output resistor connected to the output. And there'll be other circuitry that's connected in here, and we'll, um, I'll show you some examples of that later. Um, but the interesting thing here to note is that Rn is going to be really big, something like 2 mega ohms usually for the 741 op amp. So 2 mega ohms is really huge. Um, in fact, it's almost going to look like a break in the circuit, right, like an open circuit. Um, R out is going to be somewhere between 10 ohms and 100 ohms, so something that's a little bit more reasonable. This is going to be much smaller compared to this. So this is the non-ideal op amp. That means we don't make any approximations. We just use the straight values for R in and R out, which is going to be um, listed on the spec sheet for the 741 op amp that you can Google and look at that. And then um, inside of the op amp is actually this circuitry here. So let me know if you have questions about that. Um, in the next video, I'll explain gain and feedback so we can start looking at how these op amps behave in a circuit.